Let's get to him. Let that ride out. That feels good. That feels good. That feels good. Have you thought about getting pyrotechnics? I mean, playoffs, right? I'm saving for the playoffs. I've been waiting nine years. So this is the time. I might get a couple sparklers, you know, maybe a candle. I don't know. I don't know. I'm thinking about it. <laughs> sparklers. I mean, you've yeah. got extra gift money from the playoffs now. That's right. I, I know. I know. The government's going to take the piece of the pie as they do. But I think I might have just enough money for maybe three sparklers, one sparkler per round. I don't know. I'm, I don't want to plan too far ahead, you know, but I'm thinking about it. <laughs> Okay, that one from Jesse C asking if you were going to get some pyrotechnics. Wyatt, tell us about last night's game. All about it. Winnipeg versus Vancouver. Battle of the heavyweights. Tell us about last night's game. Yeah, that was a weird game. Again, like I said in the stanches last night, I'm used to like the last game of the season just being, you know, no one gives a a, a bleep about the game. It's just normally we're talking about draft simulations, thinking about next year and what went wrong. Uh, so it was different, but the game still didn't mean anything. Like it was, you know, both teams, you know, to be fair, both teams – Tried. they did good enough you know they, they made it a hockey game but i don't think either side was worried about the result too much you know I and mean, you know the fans got their win and winnipeg good for them but you know at most no one wanted to be hurt like when freedom went down blocking that shot you're like oh no like that wasn't <laughs> worth it man you didn't need to block that shot brother uh but he's trying to get a contract because like honestly him if he's his, if i'm his agent i'm sending that to every team now look at that game bet nothing he's out there blocking shots killing himself for a team so other than that, I think at one point, like Pedersen looked like he like, you know, was maybe limping for half a second. Everyone's like, oh, no, 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 no. So uh, I think I, the entire point of that game was, you know, have no one get hurt. And they accomplished it. Yay. Why? <laughs> Why? How much of a buzz in the city do you think there is for the Canucks being back in the playoffs? And I'm not talking, obviously, about Canucks Twitter because hardcores have always been engaged. They're passionate. But among the casuals in the city as a whole, how much of a buzz are, are you feeling? I think it's still there. It's it's not as intense as I thought. I think people are still a bit like, "Is this season real?" I think there's still a level of like, no one's fully accepted that it's playoffs hockey yet. Because the last time we had it in the bubble, that was kind of a surreal experience. Um, it's you know, 2015 is the last time I really had that kind of energy. Uh, I've seen you know some some flags on the cars. I've seen that around, but I think it's going to be until that puck drops in game one, where I think it's going to feel really real and people are like, "No, this is actually happening." Like I think some people still think that Gary Bettman's going to come along, but like, actually. Uh, 20 of your points don't count. You're out of the playoffs. You talk, get in here. <laughs> so I think everyone's kind of waiting. No one quite believes it. Uh, but I think after that, you know, puck drops game one, it's going to be intense because I think people have been waiting for a long time. Once they see it's here, it's visceral. You're going to see people getting into it. Uh, why? What do you make of the matchup between the Canucks and Predators? Or more specifically, what do you make of the Predators matching up against the Canucks? It's one of those things where, like, you know, I think everyone would, if they had got to pick an opponent, it would be Nashville. Um, again, that's always dangerous, right? Because you never know what's going to happen in the playoffs. Small sample sizes. All of a sudden, like, we saw Florida, you know, infamously Toronto. Like, everyone's like, yay, Florida. Oh, wait. Like, it can really come back to bite you. But just in terms of, like, the style they play, you know, the regular season success, success against them, it all kind of lines up. Um, from an entertainment point of view, I didn't want to see LA because I, I don't want to see anything to do with that. Uh, Vegas, you know, it scares everyone. Uh, we're seeing obviously every other team wants to face Vancouver, so maybe they can put that as bulletin board material. Maybe Vancouver should be answering those questions. Um, because yeah, you didn't like that points the whole thing where everyone's like, everyone still thinks it's a bit of a Cinderella situation here. Like, when you know, is that character turned into a pumpkin? And I think the first round, like, if you look at this season for it to be a success, they have to win at least one round. If they won one round in the second round, say Vegas takes out whatever happens, I think you can still be like, what a great season. If they lose the first round, I feel like it's going to be a big narrative that anything they did this year was that fluke. Like, well, hey. Yep. You know, they got a bit of a run, but that's all it was. They got exposed. They're frauds. And you're going to get that. So I think just in terms of wanting that legacy of the season to be cemented in, they've got to beat Nashville. They really do. When you look at this Canucks team beyond just the Nashville series in the first round and this idea of can they go deep in the playoffs, if you had to pick, up, pick out the biggest bull case or the biggest positive strength, whatever you want to call it, the, the biggest reason to be optimistic about their chance of going deep and maybe the the biggest reason to be pessimistic about uh, them going deep. Can you give us the bull case and the bear case? I think if you're going to, you know, forecast a long run for the Canucks, Quinn Hughes, as cliche as it, Quinn Hughes is just a game changer for me. Like you look at this, like, cause I was, you know, doing the voting this year for the first time. You look at less like, for me, the puck possession, him being, I think it was like 30 minutes over the next second close, uh, close player. Like he just, dominates and controls the game so much for Vancouver. We've seen him time after time again, just kind of take the game. 
uh, by the you know the horns and turn things around. And for me, like that is the biggest factor. And obviously, we're going to see teams now. They're going to game plan on Quinn. They're going to throw the body in Quinn. And to me, it's kind of like that Patrick Kane thing where like people obviously knew Patrick Kane was a dominant player and they didn't want to hit him, but he was so elusive. I think Quinn Hughes is very elusive and hard to hit, but all it takes is one big, you know, whammo and you see what you're dealing with. And for me, the X factor, though, is, is also Thatcher Demko. Like we, we talk about bubble Demko as a joke, but if Demko takes off, that is a game changer over other teams to me. Like he is a top five goalie. He's a guy that can steal a series. So if you're sitting there going, Hey, is this, is this a year they can go on a deep run? He was in Demko as much as, you know, it's a team game. Those two guys for me, just, they can, they can take over a series. Uh, and if you're looking at to why they won't, it's, you know, the defensive core, I, I like the defensive core, but I don't know if I trust it. Like Tyler Myers is, I like watching him, but like in a seven game series, is he a guy that, you know, you can rely on that entire time. We've seen Zadorov be a guy that can one game just like be amazing. But there's also like, you know, then games where he's making questionable decisions, trying to like go down the ice and he's turning over the puck. And so for me, um, like I like the forward depth, uh, but you know, it's going to be timely scoring, which has been both a plus and a negative for this team and the defense, which I like, I just don't know if it matches up against some of the other bigger teams. My next question was going to be about the biggest X factor, but you've named Thatcher Demko and a few of them there. Looking away from the top guys, like let's take Quinn Hughes out. Let's take Thatcher Demko out of the conversation. JT Miller out of the conversation. Patterson too. Can you take Patterson out? Because that's kind of where I'm leaning actually is like Patterson can make or break this series. Sure. I, th- I thought you were trying to get at the idea of a depth guy that... Well, Okay, so so that's a different conversation because everybody's mind's going to go Dakota Joshua. Like the matchups, right? Yeah. The matchups. You should be able to win your matchups. But I'm now looking at it and saying, okay, well, Elias Pettersson's not going to get matched up against and the Canucks aren't going to put Elias Pettersson, Niels Hoglander, and Ilya Mikheyev out as their shutdown line. So I'm almost looking at the Pettersson line as potentially getting that third line matchup. Potentially, right? Where Lindholm, Garland... Um, Joshua. Joshua, that's his name. Those guys could maybe you'd think j- just looking at it and saying those guys could take over a series, but I'm almost looking at it and saying the third line matchup might go to Elias Pettersson. And at that point, you've got to take over a series if you're Elias Pettersson. Yeah, I mean, that's there's a lot Sorry, of not really here. a question, <laughs> no, but like it's good to discuss like what is going to be maybe this, this factor you didn't kind of see coming. And I think Trevor just mentioned the comments down there that there's also the veteran savvy of some of these guys that you bring in the Ian Coles who have the experience and stuff. So that is something I'm also intrigued by. Like we always talk about, oh, maybe they're not ready for the playoffs, but they have guys who have done the playoffs before. Will that come into play? And I'm intrigued by that as well. For me, honestly, and like again, I'd mentioned I, I got to vote for the first time this year, and I'm going to tell you boys a little, little spoiler. Uh, someone got a Selkie vote for me from the Canucks, uh, and it was Connor Garland. I'm going to go to bat for that. Wow, wow. Fifth, fifth spot, fifth spot. And I'm going to, I will, and it's not just because I enjoy watch play. I think he has been, uh, he, he headlined one of the most elite third lines in the league. He's also does defensively, his underlying numbers are fantastic. And the Selkie's a bit of a, usually you go with the top scorers, can also play a bit of defense. But for me, Garland was so good defensively. Um, I think that he deserved a, a look. And I think for me, come the playoff time, you're going to have a third line that, as you said, they might get that, 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 matchup that allows Elias Pettersson to maybe unleash himself a bit so for me how we've seen the the partnership of Joshua and Garland and how well they played and maybe the x factor in all this is is Elias Lindholm how he takes off we've been kind of waiting for him he's kind of slow maybe he spits into that line all of a sudden if they get that elite third line kind of matchup on their team like that was kind of the 2011 thing that was the dream the Mount Holter line was going to take the matchups he's going to help that team go all the way he gets injured all of a sudden Kessler had that burden his body breaks down so for me having that elite third line that can go I, I honestly think that might be one of the biggest X factors for the Canucks. When you look at Nashville, what do you think is the biggest threat or the biggest, I guess, maybe not worries the, the the best word, but what do the Canucks have to be careful of when you look at Nashville on on paper and um, the pieces that they have? I think they're just a team that that, you know, has kind of found their own identity, kind of like the Canucks. They have a good system, a good structure, and they've got good goaltending. Then maybe not the top line talent that the Canucks do, but they still have a guy in Roman Josie that can kind of match Quinn Hughes with offense. And for me, it's if the Canucks kind of, we've seen them kind of lose their temper and kind of lose their way a, a few times here. If Nashville gets that first win, there is a bit of a worry that they kind of stick to the system. We've seen Vancouver struggle when a team locks them down like LA or Vegas. And if Nashville gets in their zone, I think they're disciplined enough that they can 
wear the Canucks down. And uh, their X factor is, you know what? Let's go to Luke Shen. That guy's a beast back there. He's going to hurt some. No, <laughs> I do think it's going to be fun to watch Luke Shen play for the Predators. But I think that there's a solid team that, you know, since the All Star break has kind of found their groove. And like, I'm not going like, that's the thing. I think they're a good matchup because I don't believe in them too much. But if they were to do something, I think it's just they kind of found their groove. They're kind of playing well. And um, I just do think the Canucks have the upper hand, but, you know, famous last words. Famous last words. And we'll make those your last words, Wyatt. We'll chat with you <laughs> next week as well. We'll have some playoff games to talk about, and that is certainly exciting. Wyatt, thanks so much for joining us, man. Thanks, boys. Remember, Garland for Selkie. It's going to happen. I actually love that pick. I love that pick. Wyatt, good pick. Good pick. Good first it. year voting, man. You got to make yeah. a splash. Sometimes you got to put Tobias Bjornfoot on right? your Lady Bing. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Wyatt. Appreciate thanks, it. Thanks, boys. Canucks Conversation is live Monday through Friday, every weekday at 2 p.m. over on the Canucks Army YouTube channel. Make sure you like, subscribe, and interact in the YouTube live chat every day with us, folks.